G'day, I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube with a special update on severe tropical cyclone Zelia as it moves in towards Western Australia. Unfortunately, overnight, the Bureau of Meteorology have increased the seriousness of this storm. As we said yesterday, we thought it could go over Category 3. We were right this morning. The Bureau of Meteorology put it up to Category 4 and they're now expecting it to get to the highest level, Category 5. So let's explain what is going on. It is currently sitting out at sea, meandering quite slowly and getting all that fuel off the warm water at the moment. It's exceptionally warm at this time of the year. So all that energy offshore is fueling it. It's getting a perfect center to it, very tightly packed, and that means that the winds at the middle are extremely damaging. We're talking about gusts of 290 kilometers an hour, basically almost 300 kilometers an hour. Nowhere in Australia gets winds that strong unless it comes from a tropical storm. So that's what we're seeing right here, a severe tropical cyclone. And unfortunately, the tracking has shifted to what we suggested yesterday, that it's more likely to be in the more populated parts of the Pilbara coastline, places like Port Hedland, but even Karatha, could be right in the middle of this major storm event. Yesterday it was further eastwards. Um, the forecast tracking was much further up towards 80 Mile Beach. The Bureau have shifted it to match what the European uh, modeling has basically been saying. So gale force damaging winds are expected all along this coastline over the next day or two as the storm moves in. Here is the big picture, the cone of uncertainty, which shows you all the possibilities where it could go. And now it's showing the Gascoigne coastline that wasn't in it yesterday. So the whole thing has shifted a little further westwards, but still keep in mind, the middle of it is where the storm is most likely to track. So that just gives you the kind of the, the edges of where it might go. But for now, the worst of that weather coming down through the central part of Western Australia and going into populated places, Parabadu could be smack bang in the middle of that rain event. So flash flooding is a major problem with this storm. And you don't have to be under it. As many of you know, those rivers drain a long way and most of them are dry for a long time. They're all going to come to life as this massive rain event starts to come on through. So you can see it sort of lingering there. All those numbers pressed together means it's not moving very fast, builds up all that energy. And all of a sudden it's going to stop tracking southwest and either track directly southwards or might even go a little bit southeastwards and pulling it back towards Port Hedland. That is the current thinking. So let's take a look at five o'clock tomorrow morning. This is your local time in the morning, 9.37. That is extremely low air pressure and does look like a category five storm. This also shows 24 hours of rainfall. So in these darker blue shaded areas, you're talking 300 millimeters, which is basically your annual rainfall coming in a day. You might get two times, maybe three times that amount, depending on the movement of the storm, because the movement is everything with rainfall. If it moves fast, your rainfall number drops. If it lingers, your rainfall numbers go up. So that's what we'll be looking for, how quickly it moves through. Now again, we're showing you the GFS modeling, that's the spinning one. The European modeling is the one that's not moving here in the middle. So yesterday, GFS was behind it over here. So the American modeling has moved it further to the west. That's why you're seeing Karatha now more exposed but the European modeling has barely shifted and still shows Port Hedland. So you'll be feeling that wind and rain arriving once the sun comes up tomorrow. That's when it really starts to set in. As we go through into tomorrow afternoon, if this model is correct, you are looking at landfall coming in towards the afternoon or evening. Now, this is a, a critical part. The exact placement of the center of the storm is where the worst wind is around it. And in the middle, that's where the storm surge comes up. Think of it as like a giant vacuum cleaner in the sky, makes a dome in the sea that's above normal. So you get your high tide and then you get another layer on top of that. And then on top of that, you got those massive winds blowing huge waves above it. So coastal inundation is a possibility. And if it comes right into Port Hedland, that's a very serious situation for you because most of Port Hedland is just above sea level, a couple of meters above it. Now, if it comes further over here towards Karatha, or it comes into the middle here, that would be a better outcome, not for Karatha, uh, but in the middle between the two, where it's not as populated, that would certainly be a better situation. But look, this is a populated coastline, people live around here, uh, any landfall is going to be a very serious one. But we will still need probably until tomorrow to work out precisely where this is going to make landfall. Sometimes these computer models, European here, American over here, sometimes when it's just a day or two out like this, they're completely aligned and you look at them and it looks like one map. This is still showing there's a bit of uncertainty and that's quite a large distance. Uh, 
there between those two centres, and the Australian Bureau of Meteorology, their modelling has it even further out to the east. So there's still quite a lot of movement for this storm to come on through. But when you boil it all down, it does look as though Port Hedland seems to be most at risk. And you're talking rainfall here again, two, three hundred millimetres or more, because you can get an embedded thunderstorm. And if the storm slows down, you could see two times your annual rainfall or more just falling in a short couple of days. So we still need another day to lock in precise uh, landfall where the storm is likely to go. We have another update tomorrow morning, Friday morning for you. Now here is eight o'clock Sunday morning. So the center of the storm weakening, not as much of a wind event now, it's more of a rain event, although there could still be locally damaging gusts, but you're seeing that very heavy rain pushing inland now. And that's why that flash flood risk becomes a much bigger problem because you could be over on the western side where it's not raining and suddenly have rivers flooding. So that's why you've got to really keep up to date with the Bureau of Meteorology. They are doing all those fine-tuned local updates. We just give you the big picture. Some could argue that's an easier job. It is, probably. So the local stuff from the Bureau of Meteorology, that's what you've got to keep up to date with as the storm tracks southwards with all that very heavy rain along with it. Here is the rainfall. We've got two rainfall maps for you just so you can sort of see what these two major international computer models are predicting. So this is the area with all the heavy rain. Now you've got severe thunderstorms out to the east on the edges of the cyclone. So that's sort of a separate rain event, but it all gets merged into one. So really all the way down to about Newman, you've got that very serious risk of flash flooding and it could go further down as you get severe thunderstorms coming into places like uh, Goldfields, Esperance as well, getting that heavy rain, more in the form of thunderstorms, severe thunderstorms maybe, as we go in towards the later part of the weekend. Here's the American modeling. Not a great deal of difference, perhaps not as wet looking based on their modeling, except the coastal zone here, again, huge rainfall totals for you, considering it's falling in such a short amount of time. So those two computer models, when you look at them side by side, are, are sort of showing a similar forecast, but that exact landfall area, that is the part we are yet to lock in. See on the satellite map here, you can just see in the middle, the eye forming there. It's a serious thing when you start to see the eye. That means it's really spinning very, very well in the middle. All that energy is being packed into that central part. So we'll keep a close eye on it. Here are all the warnings currently from the Bureau of Meteorology. These will be changing constantly across the next couple of days. Go to their website, please stay up to date and we will have another video for you on severe tropical cyclone Zelia. We hope to have it published by about eight o'clock in the morning, your time, Western Australia on Friday morning. Stay safe, keep up to date with the warnings. We'll see you again tomorrow.